What tell me to you for today's video? Where we full alphabet team letter B. Three years ago, I started my own alphabet series on YouTube, and I sort of didn't do any more parts after the letter A, so and I thought I'd continue this series. If you want to see it continue, let me know in the comment section, and maybe drop a like on the video, and let's get into it. If you want to check me on Twitch, make sure you do this where I do all my live theme team battles. I take just battles in general here. Pokemon sweeps, uh, shiny hunts, and all that sort of other good stuff. Check me out there, people, and give me a follow if you haven't already. So today we got two battles, and these ones are absolute fire. I did both these battles on the Wycom, so if you were one of my opponents, uh, you know, drop a little bit of a comment down below. Okay, the first battle, I'm not really sure what this trainer name is it's in another language, but they've got a Darmanitan lead. Now, what I did with this team, right, like I did with the Alphabet A team, is I picked five random Pokemon that started with the letter B. So the next thing we'd probably do, if you people were interested, we'd do C. So I'd pick like six random Pokemon that started with C. So we've got our Beldum here. It's only got Choice Specs and it's got Steel Beam, Max Health, Max Special Attack, and I thought, you know what, let's go for it. So we're going to Dynamax Beldum on the very, very first turn here against the Darmanitan. Now, normally I wouldn't do this. I thought, at, this is my very first battle they did this team, right? So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go for the Belder meme and see what happens. Look how big its eyeball is. It's it's it's, it's big and it's red. Looks like it's got like Sharingan from Naruto. Anyway, so we got the Belder here. I'm going to go for uh, my, obviously my Dynamax move here. Here comes the Earthquake. Beldum's Dynamax actually allows it to live and it's going to get a Max Steel Spike coming off its special attack, right? And Diamond gets dropped in one shot. So that was amazing. I bet you the opponent did never ever see that one coming there. Also getting a Defense Rise there in plus one in defense, which is really cool too. So uh, Beldum is going to take out one Pokemon, and the next Pokemon we got here is the Frostlass. The opponent was actually running a theme team as well, which is kind of cool. You might be able to guess it already. So I can go for a Max Steel Spike here, and that's about it. I'm obviously going to get outsped by Frostlass. It's very fast. And now it's going to go for a Hex there, taking Beldum out. But Beldum took out the Darmanitan. I thought that was absolutely wonderful start off to the battle. Now, since uh, Frostlass had Hex, that told me it's probably most definitely got a status move like Will-O-Wisp. So what I thought is, let's go into Bronzong here and let's test and see what it actually has, right? So this uh, Bronzong is actually pretty good against the entire opponents and team. Uh, they were running all Ice-type Pokemon. So I thought, you know what, let's go for a Trick Room here. And of course, they are going to go for Will-O-Wisp. So I thought, you know what, even if Bronzong is burned, Gyro Ball is going to be doing like a heck of a lot of damage to this Pokemon. It's not very bulky, right? So Bronzong is going to set the Trick Room up. I've got in this one Max Health and Max Attack Brave Nature and zero IVs in speed, right? Now, the ability is Heat Proof and the item is Aqua Berry. Guys, Aqua Berry Heat Proof only on Pitmarsh Channel. So, uh, what I can do, right, is I can go for the Gyro Ball here under the Trick Room. It's going to do lots of damage there. Unfortunately, that burn... I don't know whether that was min damage or not, but unfortunately, Frostlass is going to be able to take me out there getting the double damage on Hex. Very, very close there. Maybe someone wants to do a damage cult there whether I got minimum or max damage, but uh, it is what it is, right? So down goes my Bronze on one of my best sort of counters for this team. So now I thought, uh, like I was looking through the Pokemon with starting with B, right? And I looked at Binacore, I thought, that's a really cool Pokemon. Let's use that. So we got Iron Defense, Rest, Toxic, and Infestation. This set is max health and max special defense with Everlight. And the ability, I don't, I don't think the ability really, I think it had pickpocket or something like that. It wasn't really an ability that I needed to use much. So we got the Frost that's actually swapping out here and Glastria is going to be swapping in. I went for the infestation there on the swap. Well, I didn't know they were going to swap. I just went for that because I was actually going to go for the toxic and infestation combo. The good thing right there, I can actually go for the Toxic and Infestation now and uh, see if I can trap this thing. And I've got Iron Defense, which is going to be very, very handy if it is a physical set, which you know, I kind of thought it would be. So here we go. Here's their Dynamax Pokemon quite early on in the battle too, right? So I was thinking to myself, okay, this is going to be really, really bad. I need to be able to get one Toxic off against this thing. Now, I did invest everything into special defense and health, so it's not like a max health, max defense binacle, because like if it was, it would be a sure, like, like sure live there, easy peasy, right? So here comes the max knuckle coming from the glass they're trying to boost her attack, and of course, if Chilling Nay kicks in, I'm going to be in the big doo-doo. So I managed to live on 17 health there, and what I can do, right, is I can go for the toxic, pray that it doesn't miss, and it does. So now I'm going to get infestation, and I'm going to get toxic damage at the same time, which is beautiful. Now, the problem here is it's definitely going to go for another Max Knuckle, right? And it's going to get a Chilling Nay at the same time. So I don't really want that to happen because I'd, at the moment, I don't have a Pokemon that can end this Pokemon like in one shot, right? I'm going to probably, you know, have to do a little bit of swapping it. So when the Buzzwell, right? 
this buzzball set is absolutely crazy, but more on that a little bit later as the battle goes on. So here comes the predictable Max Knuckle there. Buzzwell is going to be able to tank that one easily, obviously due to resist. Now, they've got one more turn left. I'm thinking, okay, I don't need Binacle anymore. What I should do, right, is I should swap out of that uh, Buzzwell and then into the Binacle. I know that they're still going to get a lot of attack boost, but that was the best way to stall their Dynamax out, get the maximum amount of damage with Toxic, and, you know, minimize the amount of attack boosts they got. Not that they didn't get many, but they could have got a lot more if you think about it. So Binacle is going to be going down there, and they're going to set the Hail up. But that is their last turn of Dynamax, thank goodness, because this Pokemon is very scary. Now, my only saving grace here, it isn't a very fast Pokemon, so I can, you know, actually be able to outspeed this with some of my others, right? So I've lost half my team at the moment. They've lost only a Darmanitan, so they are in a very, very strong position. Plus, the team is very competitive, too. Like, this is a full-on competitive, like, you know, ice-type Pokemon team. So now we're going to go into Bear Tick. And I thought Bear Tick would be a cool Pokemon to use. It's probably one of the better sets on my team. This is a Rain Dance set. What I did right is I did another, like a double swap here. I went into my Buzzwell. Like trying to get them to use close combat again because I know that's the physical move that I've got right. And I thought I could stall another turn of Toxic out. So here comes the predictable close combat on my Buzzwell. So the good thing about this right is they're going to drop the defense and that's going to enable me to be able to take them out right with my uh, Bear Tick. So this Buzzwell set is a special set. Now Buzzwell, special Buzzwell only gets Round and Snore. That is it. So I've got a Snore, Rest, Focus Energy, and Work Up set. This set got some absolute domination, especially in the second battle. So you better stick around for that one. Anyway, so Buzzwell is going to be getting a rest here. And I thought, you know what? I might as well just go for rest and see what they're going to do. At this point, the opponent must be questioning what like, what I was going to swap out into. And they actually over-predicted me swapping into the Bear Tick again, right? Which is really, really good there. And now they're going to get like another like a, like an attack. Sorry, not attack, though. Defense and special defense drop. And another round of the poison damage, right? So now Buzzwell is asleep. I'm running a max speed and max special attack set I can actually go for a snore here and take them out with a snore so Buzzwell's going to be asleep right but it's going to do a little bit of flexing right flex those biceps and then go for a snore and Glastria is going to go down that was brilliant so down goes a very very threatening Pokemon there I can just I'm trying to think what would be going for the opponent's head at the moment so getting a beast boost there because my special attack is so trash and the defense is so good there's really nothing I can really do about it right so the next Pokemon is Nine Tails. I was like, all right, well, Moonblast is definitely coming my way. What can I do here? What's my play? All I can do is go for a Snore, right? And uh, here comes a Moonblast from the Nine Tails. Now, my opponent is uh, well up still on Pokemon. And, of course, their team is super good. Like, there's a super, super competitive team, right, compared to, like, my Snore Buzzwell. However, I've still got two more remaining Pokemon, and I thought I might be able to get back into this game because it's been pretty cool so far. So now we're going to go into Blossom, another interesting Pokemon starting with B. Now, I thought here I might be able to bluff a swap here, or it's going to go really, really bad. They may not want to use Blizzard without the Hail, so they swap the Nine Tiles out, thank goodness, and that is going to allow me to get up a sunny day, or a scummy day here. So Cloyster is definitely going to be a, like a... This is you know, the usual typical shell smash set. I'm going to get that sunny up and give me the chlorophyll, right? Now, on this set, I've got Leaf Blade, I've got Sleep Powder, I've got Drain Punch and Sunny Day. Max Attack and Max Speed, uh, Adam and Nature, and I've also got Heat Rock as the item. So go for Sleep Powder. Thank goodness it doesn't miss, and Cloyster is going to go to sleep. Now, if I didn't use my Dynamax up at the start with Belt, I'm not saying I regret it or anything, because that was uh, that was an awesome like, turn one there. I could have gone for Dynamax and Max Knuckle there, and then I could have got the Grass terrain up and I would have caused all kinds of problems anyway it is what it is I can go for the leaf blade here or I can go for like an actual like drain punch right so we got the closer swapping out and we got the nine tiles coming in here so nine tiles is going to get hit by the uh, leaf blade here now the problem about the nine tiles swapping in it's going to be able to set that snow warning up again with the hail. So it's like, man, this really sucks. I actually have a big problem with this nine tiles uh, swapping around the weather. So Blossom here is going to, it's going to be tough, right? So I thought they're definitely going to go for a blizzard. They made pretty straightforward plays so far. So let's swap into the bear tick and take the blizzard there. It's not going to be very effective. And that's actually going to give me like a, you know, a good position to maybe set up rain dance here. I know that I can probably live a uh, one moon blast. 
two moon blasts is, is going to be a bit dicey, right? So I've got to change this weather right away. Let's go for Rain Dance here and uh, pray that I can uh, you know outspeed the rest of the team or do some sort of damage, right? This was a max uh, attack and max speed bear tick. It's a Swiss Swim user. So Ninetales is going to be swapping out here and uh, we got the SQ coming. It's like, actually, that's not too bad, right? Now, SQ's obviously got the Ice Face ability. What I can do, right, is I can outspeed it with the Swiss Swim. So we've got, got like got rid of the hail there, which is not going to benefit, uh, which is definitely going to benefit the uh, SQ, but not so much the Bear Tick, right? But now that I put rain on the field, it won't be able to get its Ice Face back again. So we've got the Liquidation here. I'm going to get rid of its Ice Face there and then I'm going to going to attack it under the rain, right? And I get a nice little defense drop there too, which is really, really cool. So they're going to go into their nice form or nice form. I'm not really sure how to say it. And they're going to pop a belly drum. They will go for the belly drum. Look at this team. Like, Shrill Smash are closer, most definitely. Belly drum Esku. Glacier, like, this team was, and Darmanitha, this team was, like, stacked. Okay, so we got that uh, berry activation on the Esku there. Since the Swift Swim is up there and they've got a negative one of defense, I'm going to be hitting very, very hard with this uh, liquidation. So while uh, popping that liquidation there off in the rain, getting a boost on the rain and the, obviously the defense drop and Esku is going to go down. It gets wiped out. So we've got only uh, three more Pokemon left. We've got the Frost Sass, which cannot come in. It's going to get out sped. Uh, we've got the Night Tiles, which uh, could come in here as well. Now, Cloyster is going to wall me because I've only got Ice Hill Crash as the other move. So I've got to go into Blossom. I've got to take a risk here. I've got like, to risk it for the Biscuit. So uh, Cloyster is going to be sleeping here. Thank goodness. And now I thought... Should I set up the sun or should I just go for Leaf Blade? It's like, no, I can't wait to set up the sun. I've got to go for Leaf Blade here and I've got to get as much damage off as possible. So Leaf Blade does around half health to the Cloyster. Whether I'm going to be able to take it out in the next turn is another thing and Cloyster is going to be sleeping inside his little clam. So I can go for another Leaf Blade here and hopefully it takes out the Cloyster and that'll free up my Bear Tick to be able to maybe try and sweep the rest of the team. The second Leaf Blade actually crits there. There's a good chance that and Cloyster is going to be going down. I don't know if it actually matters or not whether that was first one was min damage or max damage but you know regardless the end result was the same right so now we are down to a 2v2 battle here and we've got the nine tasks coming in now at this stage right i don't think i i can't risk swapping in bear ticket because they know that i'm probably going to swap into bear tick and you know take the blizzard but even if i do right i'm gonna have to take another moon blast after that so i can't really swap blossom out at this point Blossom has basically done its time, and here comes the Blizzard from the, uh, the Nine Tiles. Unfortunately, since I'm running a sweeping set, um, it's quite bulky on the special side, but uh, um, I thought I might be able to live it maybe like really badly, but I get critted anyway, and I'm not running a bulky one, so it is what it is, right? So the next Pokemon here is the Bear Tick, my last Pokemon. Can I get this dub, people, or am I going to get destroyed by the Nine Tiles? So I thought, you know what, I've got to go for the Rain Dance. I've got to try and cause a swap here. So here comes a Moon Blast from the Nine Tiles, and I live it pretty well, actually. And now I'm going to get the Rain Dance up. This is going to enable me to be able to outspeed the Frost Slash as well, and obviously take out the uh, Nine Tiles too, because Nine Tiles is definitely going to go down to a liquidation. And here's the Baby Bottle right at the end of the battle. I was just on the verge of getting the Dub people, and they disconnected. Hope you enjoyed the first battle. People always are happy to provide some selfie, but what a comeback there. They're like, no joke, like all memes aside, that was a really really good battle like my team of memes actually like like destroyed some really really competitive pokemon there hope you enjoyed this one okay let's get into the second battle this one i think it was uh um, I, I missed what their name was but uh this was the battle this was the third battle they had with this team so we got a roserade leader here right i was thinking i could go for a sunny day here and set that up i actually had a pokemon that was really good against the team right and once again it was bronzong so i thought Maybe I should set the sun up and just see what Pokemon they're going to lead with. So they led with the uh, Rose Raid. So I went for Leaf Blade just to break a Sash if it did have one there. I wasn't really sure. So here comes the Sludge Bomb from the Rose Raid. I knew it hit me really hard, but Blossom actually managed to just live. Unfortunately, my Blossom uh, is going to get poisoned and it's going to go down. So now I find out it does have Sash. It's got the Black Sludge as the item. That was going to be my second guess for item or Life Orb. They, they're normally the three items that uh, Rose Raid would one run. So Blossom goes down. Unfortunately, there's not much I could have done. I could like I could have swapped out, but I feel this sort of set the stage for my bronze on here, right? So I'm going to take a little bit of spikes damage. Now they know that I'm not running, uh, you know, obviously I've got, don't have levitate, right? I've got heat proofs. 
So now the Roserite is going to be swapping out here, and the Toxtricity is going to be coming on. Now, on the swap right, I went for the Trick Room, and this is going to allow me to try and get a Bronzong Sweep here. So I've got that, obviously, Brave Nature. No one on their team is going to be able to outspeed me under Trick Room unless they have, like, a priority move, which I'm going to make sure doesn't happen with the Max Mindstorm right. Now, I thought about going for a, uh, a Max Knuckle here, boosting my attack, but I thought, you know what? I just want to get rid of as many Pokemon as humanly possible, right? So go for that Dynamax Bronzo. It's not often that I Dynamax so early on in the battle, but it actually worked out pretty well on this team. I was actually thinking about Dynamaxing Bellum again, but I thought this is a way good uh, opportunity to actually get my, you know, maybe a little bit ahead in this battle. So I've lost Blossom, but it's not over yet. I can definitely get back into this and maybe square the battle up. So go for the Max Mindstorm there on the Toxtricity. Toxtricity is going to get dropped in one shot, which is brilliant. And now I'm going to put the Psychic Terrain on the field as well, which is going to further power up my uh, Psychic type moves. Now, there was one Pokemon on their team right here, which was, I was thinking to myself, that's probably the only Pokemon you can actually swap in because the rest of them would have got dominated. Now, that Pokemon is Milotic. Now, Milotic is a very bulky Pokemon. Maybe at, the, at this stage of the game, they probably think I'm running a special set, right? Um, so I'm thinking maybe I should go for a Max Knuckle, which is going to re probably reveal what I'm running, but it doesn't matter. It's a Milotic, right? Now, they are pretty much forced here. This is my plan from the start, right? To uh, force that uh, Milotic out and for them to Dynamax early on as well as me, right? So we've got the Dynamax Milotic. Now, I really want to hit this Milotic with one really powerful Max Mindstorm with plus one. And then, you know, maybe just finish it off with another Pokemon. That was the idea, right? So go for the Max Knuckle on the uh, Milotic. Does very minimal damage, but it's going to boost my attack, bro. Now, I know that Bronzong is going to be able to live easy, like um, like a Water-type move from the uh, Milotic there is not going to do much at all, right? So, obviously, with the sun up and everything, too. Now, the thing about that, right, is uh, obviously the sun's going to go and the rain is going to come up on the field, too, uh, which is fine. You know, I know that I can live another hit from this thing. Bronzong is a very bulky Pokemon, and I'm running Max Elf, plus I'm in Dynamax. So, I thought about this for a while. I thought, maybe my opponent may go for Max Guard here to stop a Max Mindstorm, but they may want to get some damage on me. So they decide to get some damage on me. Milotic almost gets taken out there by the Max Mindstorm. Here comes the Max Geyser in the rain. I knew that Bronzong would be able to live this one. Not amazingly well, but it still lives it pretty well, considering. And now Bronzong Dynamax time is over. However, there is still a round of Trick Room left, and I can go for a Zen Headbutt. Now, if Zen Headbutt misses here, that's going to be nasty. Um, I would actually love to take it out here, but uh, fingers crossed, or my little bell, fingers crossed there. Go for the Zen Headbutt, and Malati is going to go down. So that was really, really good there, bearing their Dynamax Pokemon as well. And also, my Bronzong didn't even go down either, so that was a really, really good uh, you know, sort of play there. So the Twisted Dimensions are going to go, and in comes my little pony. Now, I had to think about this. I'm thinking, at the start of the battle, remember how I took spikes damage? Uh, I'm going to set the trick room up. Just remember how I took spikes damage. That information that they got early on in the battle actually told them that I was running heat proof. So that was kind of unfortunate there, but it, you know, that's how it was. You know, there's nothing I could have done. So the uh, Rapidash Galar, right? I've got to take this thing out. And you know what? I was thinking to myself, what perfect Pokemon that Choice Mex Belder, right? Now, I couldn't get the advantage of having, like, being in the Dynamax, right? But since I was Max Health, I thought I might be able to live this high horsepower like barely because it's not stat right. Here comes the high horsepower. Belt on lose on 15 health. And now it's going to get the Steel Beam off. Steel Beam with Choice Specs is going to hit like very, very hard. And I'm guessing they're running a sweeping set. And my little pony is going to be my little no more. And Beldum is going to be going down. What, man? Beldum was the MVP of both of these battles. I think we're going to have to revamp a Beldum sweep with uh, Steel Beam. So the rain is going to stop, but it did its job. And I th I, at that point, too, I was actually thinking about sending out the Bear Tick, but I thought, nah, I'll send it in later on. So out comes the uh, Duraludin. And I was like, okay, what are we going to do against Duraludin? So Binacle can't really do a lot here, like... All I can do is infestation. So here comes the uh, Thunderbolt from Binacle. Since I'm running a more of a specially defensive one, I actually take that quite well. So I know that I can get an infestation out right. At this stage, I thought, you know what? Instead of me just, uh, you know, getting fainted the next turn, I should go for a rest here and get as much infestation damage off against the Duraludin as possible, right? I knew it was a clear three-hit KO against my Binacle. So after I use rest right... Um, since I don't have sleep, like access to sleep talk or anything, it will take me out. But I will get some really good damage there with the infestation and maybe put it in range for me to take it out. Now, if you remember what Pokemon I've got left, right? I've got that Snore Buzzwell. And I really wasn't confident that Snore Buzzwell was going to be able to overcome Duralid. In fact, I was really, really scared of it at the moment, like what I was going to do. Plus, Bear Tick, like I was really scared of, uh, you know, um, this Flash Cannon from this Pokemon too. I was thinking... 
How am I going to take this Pokemon out? I've got Icicle Crash and I've got Liquidation. I don't think any of those moves are going to take it out. I think this could be it, you know, like, unless something amazing happens yet. So we got some more Infestation damage. Binacle did a brilliant job of putting uh, Duraloon and below half health there. The final Thunderbolt is going to take it out. So Binacle, like, was really good in a lot of these battles. Um, did some important tanking run. All right, so it's time to uh, bluff them with Buzzworld, right? So this is my uh, Snore set. So I thought, since I'm running max speed, I should be able to outspeed them. But uh, whether or not I'm going to do much damage is another thing. Duraludin actually swaps out, and they had a Toxapex on their uh, on their team, unfortunately. And that's going to come in. So I'm guessing they're expecting like a Fighting-type move. Well, they are going to be very, very surprised. So I'm going to go for the Focus Energy here. Now, my item is Scope Lens, so I'm going to be getting a 100% Crit Snore. And on top of that, a 30% chance of flinch. Now, I thought, what a brilliant Pokemon to actually set up against, unless it's got Haze. I wanted to see if it actually had Haze first. So, uh, we got the Baneful Bunker twice in a row. They really want me to poison them. Or oh, they, they really want me to be poisoned. And I'm going to... I like how uh, Buswell sort of puts his hands on its hips. It's sort of like doing a little, like, um... It's like what those ballet people do. I'm not sure what uh, you call it, that stance thing. Anyway, so go for another work up here. I really, like, honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. You need to get, like, uh, six workups up to do any damage at all with Snore. If not, you're going to be doing nothing. Toxapex pops a Iron Defense. Like, maybe they're thinking at this point that I'm running a physical set, right? Now, the, the thing about, like, say, for example, right, I was running a physical set. They'd be in a lot of trouble, right? Because I've got a 100% crit ratio with uh, Focus Energy and Scope Lens. So they're going to set up uh, Iron Defense here. I'm guessing they're going to set up like three Iron Defense there. And they've got Baneful Bunker and Iron Defense. Like, what other moves do they have? I had to... Uh, yeah, they had to have some other way of poisoning me in the Baneful Bunker. So my guess is here at the moment where they had Recover and Toxic. That was the other moves I thought they might have. So they're going to go for their third and final Iron Defense here against my Buzz Hall. This has given me a lot of time to get workups up. Uh, this is a like a like a very like sort of interesting opportunity. I didn't really like out of all the battles, I really didn't get much opportunity to go for like multiple workups, right? So it had Poison Jab, interesting enough, and obviously that's their way of trying to poison the opponent too. So Poison Jab is going to do nothing here, and here comes another Baneful Bunker. So I know they're expecting me to attack soon, and I actually went for the rest here. Now the key to this set, and the, also the weakness of this set, right, is you need to be able to take damage, right, to be able to go to sleep. If you don't take any damage, right, you can't use Snore, so you have to be asleep for this set to even work. So the stage is set now to go for the Snore, and look how much damage it does. It all, like, it's three quarters damage, 100% crit ratio there. Unfortunately, I did not get a flinch, but man, I would have loved to see the opponent's face after seeing that Snore. So Poison Jab is going to do very minimal damage, and now they're going to go for Baneful Bunker. At this stage, right, even if they go for Recover, they're going to be in big trouble, because eventually, I'm going to be able to take them out in one shot, right? Unless they got, like, Regenerator, but then they're going to to swap out into other Pokemon, and other Pokemon are not going to be like getting hit by a plus uh, six snore. Only on people, like shadow people. So I can go for another snore here. I've got to go for a rest to get once again there, and that's Buzzwell back at full health. Now, they, they, they're going to go for the recover this time. Not really much I can do there. I had to go to sleep again. And they are, they, they're kind of in range for me to take out the Snore. Maybe one Snore after this one. So we've got the Toxic now swapping out into the Duraloon. So they, okay, Duraloon and Special Defense is pretty crap. Um, they've already taken half health. Snore should actually take this out, right? And if it doesn't, I'm a, like a max speed, right? So here comes the Snore, and Duraloon is going to go down to a Snore with a crit. 100% crit ratio. And the only other Pokemon left is Rose Raid. Rose Raid's cooked. They can't do anything there. And I'm going to get another Beast Boost as well. Like, they in a really, really bad situation. So in comes uh, back in the Toxpex again there. And obviously, they're running a Merciless set. I can go for another Snore here. Snore should almost take them out from this situation. It's pretty much our GG here. And then they do the cancel. Hope you people enjoyed both these battles. What a crazy team. Peace out, people.